The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 14th, the marvelous Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the reason we want to do that, folks, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Please send it early. And in that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on marvelous, magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We've got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's trading down 13, 19 points. That's uh, basically flat. The S&P's up three tenths or 14 points. The NASDAQ 108 tenths, 118 points. Russell's down uh, three quarters of a percent. That would be a 14 point move. The semis are up one and seven tenths percent. That's a 60 point move. Trend is up 35 points, two tenths of a percent to the downside. Gold's down about six bucks right now. Silver's off 12 cents. Lights recruit off 62 pennies. Natural gas is off one cent. And the 30 year treasury right now is uh, flat. Trading out at 120.24. Leading the charge dollar wise, the up side we've got monday.com it's up about 19 dollars. that's a 12 percent move four percent for nvidia at 17 bucks teledyne's up 17 that's a four percent move there as well two percent for broadcom and eli Lilly is up 15 bucks nearly three percent to the downside it is mercado libre up 30 bucks a little over two percent hawaiian electric industries down about 13 bucks that's a 40 percent move don't blame it on them they ran out of water there's some corruption going on over there. If we take a look at the uh, McKesson Corporation, down about five bucks, one percent. So that's what's going on inside the markets. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. I believe where we need to start, where we are going to start, and actually kind of coincides with a workshop that's going on tonight by Teddy Kegstack. You know that I use Japanese candlesticks, and so you want to learn that, folks. So it's a, it's a, a workshop that is absolutely worthwhile. But if we take a look at the euro right here, we're going to go take a look at the U.S. dollar index. You'll see an A to B equals CD pattern. I had given the euro, I really had said, to subscribers, and this was a close call because on this trading session, really three trading sessions, the uh, second, the third, and the uh, fourth out here, we had a three river morning star pattern. So that should have confirmed that uh, by the D point pattern, but price never made it to the one to one price extension. Well, it has this morning. So it's down at 109. We've got the A to B equals CD to the downside. What needs in order for this to generate a buy the D point, a Gartley buy pattern, you need some type of bullish reversal candle. Short of that, price should go target its next price projection level in the 108 level. Now we don't want to stop there. We're going to go ahead and switch screens out here. We're going to switch over to the white background screens because we take the U.S. dollar index, if you caught the uh, 
If you caught the uh, uh, market update at 11 o'clock last week, the U.S. dollar, and you'll see it right here. Last week, the U.S. dollar index did generate a three-river evening star, and price negated that on Friday. So where's price likely going to head to? Well, it should head up to the 103.62 level. That is its TD9 count breakdown area. But if it's going to do that, if it's going to, uh, well, if it's going to continue to move higher, the euro should continue to move lower. The yen, or some combination of these, or perhaps all three, the euro should continue continue to head lower. The yen should continue to head higher. The yen has an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. It negated it at first. It did generate a sell the D point pattern back here. Let me get my cursor out. I can give you that date. That was when it formed that bear sash candle on August 3rd. That was negated last week on Thursday. Price is above its TD9 count breakdown level. The Japanese yen wants to continue to move higher out there, but a bearish reversal candle would generate a sell the D point. But as this chart here, as the euro, as the yen, I should say, is moving higher, it's weakening and putting strength inside the U.S. dollar index. If the euro continues to move lower, which it likely will, uh, that's going to put strength in the U.S. dollar index. And right now, if the Great British Pound, it's really these three currencies that we'll focus on, if the Great British Pound closed below 1.2621, it'll negate its buy the D point pattern, and that'll suggest to move all the way back to its breakout level, and that's at the uh, 12, 1.2437 area out there. So that's what's going on. What we can also do here is I'm going to close this out. I can't just say, I can't just sit here and tell you or suggest or say to you that, hey, the U.S. dollar index negated its sell the D point pattern, and therefore it's absolutely going higher. We can't do that. Why? Because of the underlying instruments and the weightings inside of those. So we really do have to pay attention to what's going on with these currency pairs. Let's uh, close this chart out. However, if we want to go just dive down a little bit into the euro, let me see. I think I've got those charts here. So we've got those charts here that are populating. And as we dive down into the euro, what do we see? Well, on a 30-minute basis, we see a TD9 count bottom that is formed. And that ran price right up to the oscillator and change line. That's that red line. 1.09 right now is a print. Price needs to close above that to then say, I'm going to target my next resistance level, which 1.092. And above that would be the TD9 count breakdown level, 1.0953. The 30-minute chart has a bottom. That's it. Just looking around. No, you've got a five-hour time frame chart. Now, this bar here, I'm going to open up the five-hour chart. So the five-hour chart is in a TD9 count bottom with this bar closing at 1 p.m. And then you've got another five hours. So uh, this evening at about uh, 6, uh, you should see a five-hour TD9 count bottom pattern complete. And so you want to watch that because if that low gets taken out, that's going to then suggest that, in fact, on the daily basis, A to B equals CD to the downside. You can't see it on this chart here, but it would really suggest that price is going to go target that level of 1.0696. And that's going to be important when you and I take a look at the market today and we take a look at gold. So we're really just setting up why are we spending time here. Well, what I want to certainly be able to pass on to you, the importance of those bullish and bearish reversal candles. So certainly attend. If you don't know those, you certainly have got an opportunity to go uh, uh, get your uh, uh, knowledge about that this evening evening so let's get away for now what I, in order for me to move away from, well let's see here if, nah that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna move away from these charts but before I completely do that what I have to do is I need to uh, close this chart out here and then uh, switch to some different data feeds otherwise I'm gonna give you bad information and Stevie is not gonna do that most certainly not intentionally out there so I'm doing that right now as we speak my apology oh shoot it didn't do it the way it needed to all right, it's going to take. Well, we're going to be going into break. So, um, hey, had a great weekend in uh, in Atlanta uh, with my uh, ten month old uh, grandson. He what a great uh, kid. This this child is going to automatically go to walking. He does not want to crawl. Period. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hey, who doesn't? Who wants to crawl? We all want to walk. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Candlestick Pattern Analysis is a primary tool among successful traders, and you should be no different. Candlestick Patterns can demystify buy points, sell points, general price movement, and so much more. 
At 4 p.m. on Monday, August 14th, trader Teddy Kekstadt will be hosting a live, hour-long webinar on Japanese candlestick patterns. Teddy, the author of the Tiger Forex Report, has been trading for 33 years, and candlestick patterns have been instrumental to his success. For just $97, see how to use candlestick patterns to analyze stocks and options in order to capitalize on market swings, increase your odds of success, and decrease your risk. During this live webinar, you will learn when to use and when not to use Japanese candlestick patterns in this volatile market. Dispel the myths about this strategy and see just how much the mastery of candlestick pattern recognition can impact your trading. Visit TFNN.com today. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we still got that mix back out there. Let's uh, let's uh, take a moment here. Let me switch screens. Let's just take a moment. We're going to go take a look at the equity markets and the questions that have come in. Let's uh, do this first. Uh, let me switch back to a different screen, and I want to just uh, share with you the market press so we get a feel for what's going on inside at least the S&P and the uh, NASDAQ 100. So this is the uh, S&P chart. Right now, on a 30-minute basis, we're in a slightly negative market breadth. And what I mean by that is there's 150 feet, 155 instruments trading below the support level, the bottom of its daily profile versus 142 above. So it's a little bit of a toss, but it is still a, a negative uh, market breadth out here for the S&P. Inside the NDX 100, this is again the 30 minute time frame that we're looking at. We've got 31 above and 22 below. So we've got, uh, you know, bullish on the 30 minute for the NASDAQ, bearish for the S&P 500. Let's go take a look at those other four time frames, 60, 240 daily and weekly. We begin here by taking a look at the S&P 500, bullish on the 60, it was bearish on the 30, it's bearish on the 240, bearish on the daily, bullish on the weekly. So all this suggests chop. A choppy, choppy market. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, you're bullish on the 30, you're bullish on the 60, but bearish on the 240 in the daily, bullish on the weekly. Again, a choppy type market out there. So we just wanted to set those parameters. Let's, uh, as long as we're on this black background screen, Peter usually wants to know what's going on inside the advanced decline oscillator. So let's just flip over to that. We'll take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, AD oscillator. And right now, this is it, it, it's, it's headed towards the oversold territory. If it gets down to the minus 150 level, that would then get it into oversold territory. So now let's go switch back and let's go take a look at what's going on inside the equity markets out here. To do that, we're going to switch screens. Give me a moment here. We'll get to those white background screens. We'll take a look at the uh, ES, the NQ, 
the YM and the Russell 2000, the RTY. If we take a look at the ES Mini, this is likely going to generate a TD9 count bottom. The reason that I have to say likely is today price must close below the close of bar number five. That close out there was at 45.1850. As long as that unfolds, then you've got a TD9 count bottom that will confirm today and complete tomorrow. As I had mentioned in the update, that we've got a new bullish structure daily profile that is attempting to form. The bottom that is at 44.69, the top is at 45.50, and a close above 4,500 today, as long as this profile holds, will suggest a rally into the top of that profile, which is also where that oscillator and change line is at the moment. The NQ, a similar pattern. Today is likely to become bar number nine of a TD9 count. It'll confirm that as long as today price closes below 15,354.25. If it does that, the pattern completes tomorrow, and that should take price up to the 15,524 level. Now, the NQ, I did mention that it was trying to form a new profile. We don't see that on this white background chart. I'm going to flip back to my other set of charts just to at least provide you with that data. And the data goes like this. Again, this will not be confirmed till this evening. But the bottom of that profile or support is at 15,079. The top is at 15,551, and the center is pretty much centerish. It's at 15,315 out there. So you've got TD9 counts for the ES and the NQ. The issue here is the Dow is not participating. It is uh, just it has a sell the D point pattern, but it, which has basically led to a consolidation with inside its profile. We have seen a couple of closes below the bottom of that profile, 35,267. So it's just set up a, a little bit deeper consolidation range to the side. Now, bar number eight is likely going to form today inside the Russell 2000. It's one day behind what the ES and the NQ are showing. We can see that the Russell is pulled back to a level of support that can be a bottom as well, and that's at 1906. But you really need to see that TD9 count bottom pattern confirmed. Today, you need to see a close below the close of bar number four. That's likely going to happen, but we don't know for sure. That level is out at the uh, 1955.10, and tomorrow you would need to see a close below 1938.10 in order for the Russell 2000 to generate its TD9 count bottom pattern there. So how are we going to put this together? Well, one, we know we've got some choppy markets out here, but the ES and the NQ are signaling to you and I that they want to rally after they complete these patterns, and I believe it's those new profiles that are just simply adding adding to that signal. But again, it's only 1122 in the morning, and we can't really call those new profiles, let's say we can't guarantee them. Tomorrow, we would be able to guarantee them, or sometime later this evening, we might be able to do that as well. So now let's go switch over. Let's go take a look at some of the uh, requests that have come in. We don't want to get behind on those. The first one coming in from uh, Hector and Patty. And actually, Hector wanted to take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns inside of CVX. So uh, let me just stay right here for a moment. Then we'll switch over to my black background charts. If we take a look at the daily time frame for CVX, we don't see any kind of a topping signal. We see price trade above uh, the top of its profile level as well as this green oscillator and change line. It's bullish. In the weekly time frame, you're trading above the top of its profile. You closed above it last week a second close about 161.14 will suggest a further move higher we've got a consolidation uh, inside of the monthly profile uh, monthly uh, uh, profiles between 143.97 and 189.68 it has a road momentum indicator top so we don't really know what's going on in the monthly chart other than the weekly uh, consolidation between profiles, but it does look like the daily and weekly are suggesting that price wants to continue to move higher. Now let's go back to those black background charts out here, and let's go ahead and pull up uh, the tool that we can use to calculate those A to B equals CD patterns. Let's actually get over to CVX. That would be most helpful. And what, what Hector was focused on, so Hector, I want to take a look at this with you. Hector was focused on and he's, uh, he and his wife are, are going through the uh, different workshops that are available through uh, if you're a subscriber to Mastering Probability. And one of those is focusing in on the A to B equals CD pattern. And what Hector was looking at, he wanted to start here on the uh, low of May, uh, the week that began May 29th out there. And that low is 149.74 is the A point. For a B point, what he'd like to use up here, and that's fine, is the high from July 24th. That high out there, 169.04. Now, on the retracement, it was a 54% retracement. Last week, what we saw was price close above that 164.04 level. That 164.04 level had volume of 35 million shares. And last week, this passed it with 46 million shares. So this is suggesting that there is an A to B equals CD to the upside that could or should take price to 170.52. Now, that's on the weekly time frame chart. And yes, 
yes, Hector, that uh, what you guys drew in there is absolutely valid. If I were to try to validate that A to B equals CD on the daily time frame chart, I wouldn't be able to do it. Why? Because you were starting back just, and, and you probably saw this as well, but I just want to make sure that you did see this. If we, uh, what were we using? You were using, let me just make sure. You were using the low from the week of May 29th. So now I want to get back to that time frame, and that would be right back here, May 29th. So, uh, no, I'm sorry, it would be right here. May, uh, it was June 1st. So that was the week of, the reason I can't use that as the low for this on a daily time frame is price retraced all the way back into it back on June 23rd. But I'm going to use that low, so that's an effective low. When we take a look at a daily time frame, the daily time frame on July 24th did volume of 9.7 million shares. And yes, price closed above it on Friday when it closed at 164.15, but it was with 6.6 .6 million shares. We typically don't see that. So it's a bit of confusion out here. But I'll just say this. As long as price remains above 164.04, you likely are going to go or price is likely going to go target that 170.13 area, 170.13 to 170.52 out there. So, Hector and Patty, I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next request coming in from uh, Dan inside the Tigers. And we're going to flip, flip back to the uh, white background chart. So let me give me a moment to do that. We're going to take a look at the banking sector, KRE. So if, uh, give me just a moment. We'll get there. And it was really the question was really just a general overview as to what uh, what we see in the uh, chart. So the first thing that we see when we take a look at the uh, uh, regional banking sector, KRE, is what? Roads went to Mindicator Top with what? Price consolidating with inside its profile. That makes 46.55, Dan, a real key level. Why is that? Because if price closes below it, it could be signaling to you and I a change in trend that would take us down to the 43.58 area. Steve Rhodes with CFNN. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Dan at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts 
to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for the uh, regional banking uh, sector, the KRE. We've established on the weekly daily time frame, you've got a uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator top. You've got a sideways consolidation with inside profile, close below that level at 46.55. The bottom of that profile would suggest lower price. Now, I said lower price, the target being 43.58 to the downside. We don't have a, a topping pattern inside the weekly time frame chart, but that would really be the next support level that stands out, 43.58. Below that would be 40.50. Too. The monthly chart prices trading with it uh, is prices well closed above last month it closed above the top of its profile still kind of too early that level the top of that profile is at 4684 so that would suggest that it wants to rally further but you got to pay attention to the daily right now and the weekly charts and it's really the daily that's the one uh, that we need to uh, keep our eyes on so Dan I hope that that helped you out with regard to KRE and uh, thank you so much for the request the next request is to take a look at uh, ticker symbol Oh, was to take a look at gold. So that next request came in from Jimmy D, and his question was, has gold or the GLD bottom? So for that, let's go take a look at this set of charts out here. This set of charts, we're going to answer that in one fell swoop. So what we really want to focus on to answer that question is gold versus the GLD. Oh, I don't have the GLD up there. thought I did. Um, well, I, so if we take a look at gold, upper left-hand side, you're going to see that uh, today is going to complete the TD9 count bottom. Now, this is trading back into a prior TD9 count bottom that went up to a TD9 count top. So the question is, do the TD9 counts work? Well, they typically do. In this case, the question is, will they? Well, there is that influencing factor that we took a look at on the U.S. dollar index. The euro looks like it's busting through the lows, wants to head lower. The yen looks like it wants to weaken and further its move higher. And there's a possibility the pound wants to take out its buy the D point pattern. So over time, we'll uh, find out here, and I think that time is within the next 24 hours or so. But yes, the question was, is there a TD9 count bottom? And the answer, Jimmy, is yes, absolutely. Would I be paying attention to GLD? Absolutely not, because this is the underlying instrument. And I believe if we go take a look at the GLD, which we'll do, I'll put those screens up out there. Um, I think you're also asking about the GDX. And here you can see that the GDX had uh, formed a TD9 count bottom uh, last Wednesday out there. So, yes, we've got bottoms when we take a look. And silver is also going to complete a TD9 count bottom today. Now, what should transpire at a minimum is price should move up to test those oscillator and change line. In gold's case, 1959, silver around 2334. Again, those numbers are going to change as price moves up and down. So that takes care of that question. Well, the only thing it doesn't take care of is taking a look at the GLD. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's definitely answer Jimmy's question out here. Let's take a look at it. So let's put up GLD, not GLF, because that's not going to not GLDD. That's not going to help us. And on the GLD, momentarily we'll see this populate. Sorry about that. Uh, I think I got too much run in the background. And uh, yeah, so it's TD9 count bottom completed on Friday of uh, last week out there. And that says that price would need to close above the top of the profile. What we like about this is that price actually came back and it's tested and rejected. It's breakout level 176.66 out here. But it's really, Jimmy, it's really the underlying instrument the gold contract that you want to pay attention to, not the ETF structures out here. Not that we don't want to pay attention to them. They do provide us with information, but really it's the underlying instrument that we want to focus in on. So hope that helped answer your questions about gold, the GLD, the GDX, and thanks so much for the request. Last week, we were taking a look at Micron. MU is the ticker symbol out there. And we said, or I mentioned, hey, we should get back and take a look at it now. Friday was bar number eight of a TD9 count, John C. In order for this to form a TD9 count bottom, price today must close below, and I'll give you that level, that's going to be 67.65, 67.65 for MU. If price closes above that, this TD9 count pattern goes away. So that's the first element. Now, what price has done today, it's rallied right up to that green oscillator and change line. If price can clear that, even if the TD9 count pattern goes away on a daily basis, if price can get above that, 
that will still suggest that odds favor a further rally. Now, the further rally would then want to take on 69.14. That would be the next area of resistance. You're trading into the first level of resistance. Again, that green oscillator and change line. Again, that is printing out exactly at 67.88 as we speak. So Micron may form a TD9 cal bottom, but if the rally continues, well, the answer is that pattern will go away. Do I have any other kind of pattern? It turns out we do. And what's that? That's the buy, the D point. That would be a Gartley buy pattern. So, John, don't worry too much about whether it's just the TD9, just because Stevie said, hey, if it closes above that, then it's going to negate that signal. But here we can see the A to B equals CD pattern. We'll just simply draw the A to B in. I'll go ahead and move that over to the C point. Give me a moment. So that I can grab it. There we go. So you can see we've extended well beyond the one to one level. And as long as we get a bullish reversal candle, and it seems like that is likely going to happen inside of Micron today, unless just the blank hits the fan, uh, you're going to have a bottoming signal. So that then says watch the resistance levels which we've already discussed. On a weekly basis, we just have a consolidation with inside a profile. We can say the same about the monthly time frame. So John C., thanks for remembering and reminding me to uh, take a look at Micron uh, for you, and I hope that that review helped. Dan, inside the Tigers, Dan wants to take a look at GSM. So let's get over to, oh, we didn't uh, get those charts in. We will right now, GSM. GSM is uh, GSM. Where is that now? Sorry about that. GSM is uh, Ferro Globe PLC. Trading out $4.79 or thereabouts. Boy, you got a beautiful hammer candle today as prices pulled back to its breakout level. That breakout level being $4.61. You're going against a uh, prior bottom out here where the swing point, this is on July 6th. July 6th, holiday time, 1 million shares so far today. You've done 421,000 shares. It's actually pretty good volume. But I don't know how you really benchmark it against that July 6th day, knowing that that was definitely a holiday volume trading session. So here's how Stevie Wood benchmark it. Price is pulling back and testing the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. And if price does close below that low, that low, by the way, let me give me it here. That low is $4.78. Um, you know, it's going to suggest another run for the breakout level. Sometimes pulling back to the breakout area can be a bottom pattern. So if that's the case for GSM, for Ferro Globe, let's go take a good 30-minute time frame chart because we should see on intraday time frames, and 30 is not the only time frame to use. You should consider using a 65-minute time frame as well, 130-minute, 195. Those would be the primary time frames to use in analyzing your intraday charts. 15 minutes will work just fine as well, and a 30-minute. Uh, so now we're looking at that 30 minute chart. And this shows a road's mint indicator signal, but it didn't generate that bullish reversal candle, Dan. So it always makes me somewhat skeptical. However, price is back inside its profile. And so we do have a rally that's going on inside of GSM. What you're looking for, first I would say is for price to take out the top of that profile, but we saw that price took that out for three consec four consecutive sessions, and that didn't, and that should have led to higher price, and that didn't. So I'm somewhat suspect as to uh, suggesting to you that a price closed about 482, that you're off to 506 out there but you've got the bottom pattern you just don't have the signal you don't have the confirmation of that pattern uh, at this uh, moment so with regard to GSM right now I just have to leave you with watch the bottom of that daily profile see what today's candle is if you've got a nice hammer candle that would be a beautiful thing as well Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We get back from this break. We're going to take a look at NVIDIA for McGuppy as well as the SMHs. And, of course, folks, I'd love to hear from you as well. That's Steve at TFNM.com or inside the Tiger's Den. Any ping will do. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to go take a look at the charts here for uh, NVIDIA. This is for McGuppy inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, just, uh, sorry, I was doing a couple of things. So the question was, uh, is the low in? What I can share with you is NVIDIA has certainly formed a buy the D point pattern. It looks like this. I'll start with the A point out here. We'll draw that down to the B point out there. That's also labeled B from a Chapman Wave lettering standpoint. I'm just simply going to move that A to B. I'm going to try to. There we go. Move that to the uh, C point out here. That's going to be right there. And you can see you've made the one to one A to B equals CD. And right now, you've got that bullish reversal candle. What that suggests that what NVIDIA should do is uh, at least rally up into test an area of resistance. The first level is 441.89. That is the bottom of its daily profile. Let me just check on my other screen just to make sure NVIDIA. Oh, wait a minute. NVIDIA is attempting to form a new profile right now. The bottom of which is at 408.44, McGuppy. So put that down on your pad of paper. And the resistance zone, and it is a zone because it is a bearish structure. It's between 445 and 456. And at 449, you got the green oscillator and change line. So price should target that bearish structured zone area, 445 to 456. On the weekly time frame, you've got price last week came back and tested the bottom of its profile down at the 408.99 level. So as long as that area holds, that's good. On a monthly time frame, if at the end of the month we did generate or it did generate a bearish reversal candle, then it would form a Rhodes momentum indicator top. But right now, the, to answer your question specifically, uh, did this form a bottom? The answer is yes. If we look at the 30-minute time frame, we'll see that this also formed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom out there. And now price is above uh, resistance at 418.34. So this should continue to run higher out there. It's going to be that daily uh, levels. Uh, no, it's not the daily. There's nothing else really. So NVIDIA should continue to move higher, McGuppy. If we go take a look at the SMHs, that was your second request out here. They too are forming a TD. Now they're forming a TD9 count bottom. And that's likely going to happen today. Price would have to get way up here 
to the 153 ish level, we're at 149 to, to negate that as a possible signal. But there's an A to B equal CD as well to the downside. So you've got a confirmed by the D point pattern. You will have a confirmed TD nine count bottom. That pattern completes tomorrow. And what price should do, now let me just check on the SMHs. Perhaps there's a new profile so also attempting to form. Let's just uh, find out. So I'm doing that research on my other screen out here. No, there is not. So what price should do is run up to that 150, 169 area. And if it can overtake that, then it should go target that oscillator and change line. That's at 154. On a weekly time frame, price is, you've got a new profile here that's attempting to form. So you'd like to see a weekly close above 147.55 McGuppy to confirm that daily signal that we're looking. Because if price closes below that, even if it's just below that, it's uh, somewhat suspect. But to answer your question right now, yes, uh, the SMHs uh, as of 11.45 in the morning are confirming both a TD9 count bottom and a buy the D point pattern. The next request coming in from Lori. Lori, Lori wants to take a look at the IONQ out here. So let's pull those screens up and she is looking for an entry point. Now we take a look at IONQ. What we can see here is a Rosemontum indicator top. That formed, let me get to some other screen too, just to make sure there's, where's that? What did I do? Okay, uh, so right now you've got a new profile. So you've got a confirmed Rhodes Momentum indicator top. You have a new profile that formed on a Friday of last week. It is bullish in structure. And what you'd love to see this do, so it, so here, let's do this here. It's easier, now I'm gonna, uh, I have problems with changing screens. I'm gonna just stay, stay put. So what we, what we got out here was, I wanted to see, what do we, so we don't have, we've got a confirmed top. What we don't have is a confirmed bottom pattern. What we just have right now is price consolidated with inside its new profile level. And that's uh, ranges from 1464 to 1625. Yesterday on Friday, I should say, price uh, ran that whole gamut. It ran up and tested the 1625 level, it tested the oscillator and change line, rejected that. Today, we're back inside. We're still inside that profile level. I don't have a clear signal here, Lori, even though it took me a while to spin it out. I'm spitting it out now. I don't have a clear signal here to suggest that you enter a position just yet. Instead, I think you need to watch this a bit more. Why? Because this could be signaling an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. Could be. We had big volume inside this on Friday. When I say big volume, the volume on this instrument was about 51 million shares. To give you an idea, today we're at 9.7 million shares. I don't have a top on the weekly. I don't have a top on the monthly chart out here. So it's really about the daily, and I just don't have a great feel. If I go down to a 30-minute time frame chart, what do we have here? Well, now this is helpful because we have a TD9 count bottom pattern. And if price closes below the low of that pattern, let me give that to you right now. The low of that pattern is out at uh, 1492. If price closes below that, that tells us that, yeah, we don't have a bottom, at least on an intraday, intraday basis, and that we're likely headed lower. But I don't have a really solid reason to suggest that you enter a position now, knowing that price, we don't have a bottom pattern on a daily, and knowing that price ran into resistance levels on Friday, and uh, so I would just stay put uh, there. But uh, right back, if you you know if you see some other developments inside of IONQ, please write back. We'll be happy to take a look at that for you. Alton wanted to take a look at CHK. So let's get over and take a look at those charts. C8, and he is uh, he'd like to start a position. So CHK right now trading out at about eighty four dollars and twenty three cents. It's really eighty four oh nine. I've got a little bit of a delay here. You have a new profile that formed last week. Um, price is likely going to go target the 8190 level. That's as long as price closed below 8428. From a topping standpoint, on a daily basis, uh, the only top that I potentially have is a, a is a wave seven top. So we do have a top in place, wave number seven. Um, yeah, and I, I, so it says uh, what, what you're looking for an, an entry point. You've got to wait and be patient. Odds favor move back to 81.90. And then what we'd be looking at, Alton, as price approaches that level, is do we have some bottoming signals on the intraday time frame, such as the 30-minute out there? And if we take a quick peek at the 30-minute chart right now, you've got a Rhodes Momentum indicator confirmed bottom. For price not being able to clear that oscillator and change line, this is suggesting to you, and at first it's a neutral signal, not a buy signal right now, and uh, it uh, makes this uh, pattern somewhat uh, 
suspect out there. So be patient on this one as well. Just like Lori, I think this one is going to require a bit of patience. Uh, Microsoft was a request by uh, Nancy inside the Tiger's Den. Let's put that up on our screens out here. Microsoft right now, let me see, what is this printing at exactly? Printing out at uh, 302363. And what do we have? I don't have a bottom. I don't have a bottom signal, a bottom pattern. If anything, Microsoft negated its um, TD9 count bottom. Hmm. A bullish reversal candle. I can see where that would confirm a bottom. We don't have that out there. You've just got a little bit of a rally. Now, what's not shown on this screen here, Nancy, uh, that is shown on my other one, is a, a new profile. So your, your new support level is 320.80. Your resistance zone, because it's a bear structure profile, is between 327 and 330. So those are the areas to watch out there. I say a close below 320.80 is going to suggest lower price. On a weekly basis, we're trading below profile. We close below it on Friday. It's got a TD9 count top. That suggests to move to 307.59 out there. Your next level of support, other than the 320.80 level, is at 317.59. So that's what I see when we take a look at Microsoft. I know you want an Apple as well. I'll put those charts up on our screen right here. They're streaming inside the Tiger's Den. You'll be able to take a look at those during the uh, uh, during this breakout here. But here's what we can say right now as it gets populated. I don't see a bottom pattern. The question is, is Apple also forming a new market profile? And for that answer, the answer is yes. I'll give those that data to you as soon as we get back to the ring. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back.
back, folks. So, Nancy, you got new profiles. You also have a TD9 count bottom inside of Apple that will form today so long as price closes below 179.80. If price were to close up Above 179.80, and I don't know what it's going to do, 178.13 right now. But a close above 179.80 will negate the TD9 count bottom. There will be, there will be no other bottom pattern that I see out here. So you're looking for Apple to not rally much uh, further out there, and then you'll get your bottom. Now, what should then take place is price should then target its oscillator and change line. That's up to the 184.95 level. The top of its new profile is at 182.88. So mark those levels. But really, the 182.88 is the first area. The uh, oscillator and change line is going to change in uh, price as price moves up and down. Your support level is at 178.13, and that is a real strong support level. The reason I say it's real strong, even though it's not showing on my screen, the center and the bottom – are in those same positions. So if you see Apple close below 178.13, being long is not its message. And said that would suggest to move back to 175.31. That doesn't mean that you can't remain long. That would just really, what I'm really trying to say is you should prepare for lower price out there. But right now you've got a TD9 count, potential bottom out there. You'll know by day's end. But Guppy wanted to take a look at Mosaic out here. Let's take a quick peek at that. MOS is the ticker symbol. Oh, that's not it. Let's try that one more time out there. We take a look at Mosaic. Mosaic had formed a sell the D point pattern, McGuppy. This was back here on August the 10th. So that was back last Thursday. Right now, price gaps down inside its bullish structured profile. Its support level is 39.64 to 39.94. That's where the buy the dipsters are located. But if price closed below 39.64, they won't show up again until about 35.95. To close out the show, folks, let's go take a look at the NQ. It's intraday charts out here. The level to be watching, in my opinion, and it really comes from the uh, four and five hour charts here is the resistance of the top of their profiles. And that's where price of four, they formed roads went to indicator bottoms on Friday of last week and where the rally ran in resistance with the top of those profiles and top of that profile is up at 15 221. Now, the current candle session that we're in does not close till 2 p.m. That still could act as resistance, but that's what you're watching for at day's end. If price closes above that, we are likely rallying further inside of the NQ. Folks, stay tuned for some great programming. I'll be back with you on Terrific Tuesday. Actually, I'll be back uh, around 3.15 with Tom. I just got to figure out what it is we're going to talk about. But have a magnificent, marvelous Monday, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.